producing area. And although the industry has diminished over the years, the town of Selkirk is still home to some of the most successful woolen mills in the country. My tartan is being woven here at the world famous Loch Caron Mills. Can we cut a wee bit of that off mm -hmm. and just put it next to it? Since we last met, designer Jilly Blackwood has been consulting with Dawn Robson Bell, head of the design team here, to choose the precise shades of yarn which will be used to weave the Mickey Tartan. This is um, the yarn that John had especially dyed oh, in right. Sky. The natural dyes. Yes. Yeah, that's lovely. I think it's a marriage of these two colours. Mm -hmm. I think you're better sticking with the moss. Okay, do you want to cut some of that off? Yes. Okay. What do you think of the tartan? Dawn? I think it's actually quite unusual. People try to go very soft and muted, but sometimes you need some colour to make it stand out mm -hmm. and look individual. And I think with putting the orange and the red together, that's given it that nice individuality and a, a little bit of brightness, but without it being too garish. Today, those chosen yarns will be added to the production run. Customer manager Alan Duncan is going to take us through the entire weaving process from start to finish. Firstly, yarns of my chosen colours have to be formed into the warp, the pattern of threads that will run the whole length of the cloth. I have the honour of tying the first threads onto the warping machine. From here on, the process becomes high-tech as the threads are taken up by the computerised machine. So exciting, the beginning. Yeah, push the button and off you go. Yeah. Ready for this, Jilly? Yeah, go for it. I've never seen such amazing technology. Look at the speed. I mean, look up there. And you're actually beginning to see the, the tartan, the warp tartan coming in. And soon the um, stripes will be coming in, the, the, the two brothers. The red one is the dead one. <laughs> it is like a story, but this is so quick. With the warp assembled, it's ready to be attached to the loom. And that's the job of knotter Billy Muir. Hi, Billy. How's it going? What, what exactly are you doing here? We're actually not in your tartan onto the top one, then we pull it through. So the previous uh, pattern will pull my pattern through. through. Okay, right, I've right got it. Right. How long must this taken by hand? When I started work many years ago with the tie by hand, because there were no nothing to This is when you find out if you're right or wrong. At the end? At the end, as long as it counts every end, that's it. That's your job done. So the warp is attached and the loom is loaded with the yarn for the weft. All that remains is to get the machine rolling. Before the cloth leaves the mill, every single stretch is hand-checked. Donna Ann Scott is casting her eye over the tartan. I need to put that thread in. It's actually broken in the loom. And then you just start lifting the stitches. Yeah. 
that's it. Would you ever have to like darn right across the whole length oh, yeah. of the fabric? Yeah, that's the whole way. So you'd have to go for 63 metres. 63 metres oh, doing yeah. that? If it's out the whole piece, you have to darn it back in. I'm just fascinated by how much work goes into it and that, uh, you know, this is a quality piece of fabric, isn't it? Tell you what, though, Jilly, I just cannot wait to see the whole thing made up into a kilt. In a few hours' time, one of the greatest clan gatherings is going to take place here, and I've been invited to join my clan for the occasion. But before I do, there's something vital that I have to collect. Since I began the process of designing the Mickey Tartan, textile designer Jilly Blackwood and Brian Wilton of the Tartans Authority have been with me every step of the way. Is this it, then? Yep, and I have something to present to you. Oh, yeah? Which is your certificate from the National Archives of Scotland. Oh, gosh, the Mickey Tartan, it's official at last. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Brian. Brilliant. Go to show us the kilt, then. <laughs> Let's do it right now, will we? You ready? OK, yep. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wait till you're in it. It will come alive. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, yeah. It looks different from far away. Then when you come up, then you see all the other colour that's actually in it. You start to see the mossy green and the black. It's wonderful. Now that I've got my fantastic Mickey kilt, I'm all set to join the gathering of 125 clans, the largest for centuries. My ancestors were McDonald's, so I'm joining Clan Donald to march up the Royal Mile for the Great Clan Parade. Lord MacDonald of MacDonald is the High Chief of Clan Donald. What else in this world can cross all these barriers that clanship can? You can get a number of people coming from all over the world and through the common link of a surname be immediately part of a large extended family. This parade is a chance to welcome back MacDonald's, Campbell's, Mackay's and others of Scottish heritage from the four corners of the world. And it's also a time to extend a warm welcome to those Scots who've made this country their home. I can't think of a better place to be on the Royal Mile for the end of this series, celebrating the culture, the heritage, and the people that are made in Scotland.